Oh, I'm going to give them a call. Right. So, it's 2 o'clock. There's none of our case. Let's start. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm calling the June 22nd, 2021 meeting of the Ad Hoc Fine Arts Committee to order. Pursuant to the Illinois Attorney General's guidance to public bodies on the Open Meetings Act during the COVID-19 pandemic, dated July 2nd, 2020, County board members may participate without being physically present in compliance with the established provisions. A call to order, please, Teresa. Um, Member Desart. Here. Member Garcia. Here. Member Hart. Chair LaPlante. Here. Vice Chair Rutledge. Here. Member Solomon. And I know Member Hart is coming, so he should be okay. joining in soon. Um, Let's go and approve the minutes. I move to approve the minutes of the Ad Hoc Fine Arts Committee, the regular meeting from Tuesday, June 8th, 2021. Do I have a second? second. And then do we need a roll call for that? Roll call, please. Uh, Chair LaPlante. Aye. Vice Chair Rutledge. Aye. Member Salmon. Member Desart. Aye. Member Garcia. Aye. And Member Hart. Do we have any public comments? No, we do. Okay, great. So um, for my chairwoman's remarks, I have a lot of wonderful things to talk about. Hello, Terry. Good to see everyone that's joining us via Zoom. Um, I'm so glad you're all here. Um, really remarkable what has happened in only two short weeks. So since we last got uh, approved our, our, the budget transfer, we have been working nonstop. Um, I've been doing something, I mean, every day, seven days a week, working towards this. Some of the things that I've done, um, we have gotten our first sponsorship, which is WDCB, which is the jazz um, radio station that's out of COD. So not only are they going to sponsor us, they are going to set up and um, broadcast live from the fairgrounds. They are going to choose which acts to broadcast, which fit into their genre and to their programming, but they're going to have a very big presence and help us run everything. Um, we also did secure officially a producer, a music producer to help coordinate the events to make sure that we have, because um, there's gonna be a lot of moving parts here and especially between staff at the fairgrounds, staff at the county, the committee, then this will be really helpful. Um, we are working on the call for artists right now and um, putting that together, Jim, working with Jim and also with Debbie from Arts DuPage in terms of what the artists will need and what the fairgrounds can provide and just writing up the language. So that's gonna be going out, hopefully, probably, I'm gonna guess tomorrow. Um, I had a wonderful time at the Choose DuPage board meeting. Thanks to Greg Bedeloff for hosting and inviting me to present. And I was able to tell the entire board about our committee and this initiative. And um, I'm gonna have Greg speak about that later on when we get to our discussion, but it was wonderful and really well received and we've already been getting feedback from them. Um, for example, COD reached out today to say, we want in, how can we help? Can we be a part of this? What do you need? And you know what, I think COD has just a tiny little bit of experience putting on some big arts events. What do you guys think? Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and let's see, we've been working on securing headliners. Um, Terry, Orbert, Mark, that's our producer, and myself. We've got really, really amazing ideas and leads that we are following up on that we will, once they're confirmed, we can make public. But um, I think it's really exciting. And I think some of these acts that we have are gonna be big draws and you're gonna put on a wonderful show. Um, I was also on the Deep Dive DuPage podcast this past week to discuss this initiative and this festival. So people are already talking about it. And then I also just wanna really highlight that since our meeting two weeks ago, I've been getting so much feedback via phone calls, emails, texts, and on social media in support of this event in particular and the Fine Arts Committee in general. People are thrilled. And I think make sure you keep talking it up amongst people because the feedback, like I said, is overwhelmingly positive. And I think now that people have such a tangible example of the wildly successful Frida exhibit, they get it, they see it, they see the 
all of the different windows that have been painted throughout, you know, Wheaton and Glen Ellen, all the different um, souvenirs that are being sold that they can't even keep on the shelves in the, in the local shops and how it's affecting the economy. So I think it's a wonderful example that we have to point to and we're really lucky for that. So again, shout out to everyone who's involved in the Frida production. Um, I also did another golf cart tour with Jim. Jim, I think you should sell admission tickets to that because that's pretty awesome. I loved it. And um, I did rub it in my youngest daughter's face. I said, you really missed an awesome golf cart ride. So um, soon, maybe our next meeting or the one after that, we are going to all go down there so Jim can show everyone around. But Jim has, he's going to be speaking in a little bit. We covered every inch of that fairgrounds again, and we even you know, further enhanced our vision and our goals and ideas, which I can't wait for you all to hear. Um, and then I've just been in constant phone calls, meetings, emails, as if you've heard from me, you know, and thank you to everyone who's been on the receiving end of those. I'm happy to do this initial sort of push first, because this is, I have to lay the groundwork, right? It's the inaugural event. And then we're going to be bringing everyone in and there's going to be a lot more delegation and hands on deck. But this is what it looks like getting the initial ball rolling. So um, with all of that being said, let's move into the discussion and updates for um, the Fine Arts Festival. Oh, one more. I forgot one more thing. <laughs> um, we also are going to discuss how another issue or that we want to make sure and take on as the Fine Arts Committee our goal is to have a line item in the budget for the 22, 2022 budget. A budget survey was just released today. On that survey is the question, do you believe the arts should be supported in DuPage County? So guess what? You're all going to be sending that survey out to every person you know, and everyone is going to be answering with a resounding yes. This is how you support the arts, by funding the arts. So, and more work that we can do as a committee is to make sure to help the arts organizations, especially we're looking at Arts DuPage um, and our different arts organizations in the community to get funding and to get grants. Greg can speak to that. And Amy is here as the Chair of Economic Development. We are gonna be working arm in arm to make sure that the arts are fully funded in DuPage County with all available funds through ARPA and through grants and anything we can do from the county. So now we can move on. So back to our discussion and our updates. I would like to turn it over first to Jim McGuire from the County Fairgrounds. And Jim, would you please give everyone sort of a thumbnail sketch, a tour of like how you did it, you know, to me over at the fairgrounds and your big ideas that we discussed. If you could share those, that would be wonderful. Oh, I think you're on mute. Yeah, you're on mute or... There we go. All right, I'm with you now, I hope. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, uh, so just looking at a calendar of a lot of fine arts festivals that are out there, uh, I was trying to think of a way that we could set this event apart from the rest. And being a little unique that it's uh, most of your fine arts festivals are being held in uh, more of your downtown settings, parks, things like that. Here we are at the fairgrounds. Uh, my idea was to try to tie this particular event back to the fairgrounds or somewhat back to agriculture in a way. Uh, some of the features we have on the fairgrounds, we have a beautiful butterfly garden that's down there. We have a community garden. We have an orchard. We have different spaces uh, that we're developing, both for educational and for community give back. Uh, the original use of this ground was the poor farm for the county way back when. And so we've kind of converted a lot of our space this year. We're going to have a lot of tomatoes, a lot of different vegetables that will be going out to food pantry, pantries. And we have our sunflowers that are everywhere in our, our flower gardens. So my thought was to kind of tie somewhat back to agriculture. And the idea that we do with the fair uh, is competitive. So we have some competitive exhibits. So the opportunity to get other folks involved with their artwork, beginners, to possibly offer some competitive exhibits. So possibly something, uh, artwork on pollinators. So people who would be painting or doing something, photography of bees, butterflies, things like that, something with flowers. 
and have different exhibits that were the competitive side, kind of tying it back to a fair, but also all in art form, you know, in art. Uh, and just kind of tying it together a little bit with the fairgrounds, with the fair, with the agriculture, and something unique and different. And with that also, uh, some of the discussion that was being had was fundraising and how to raise money for this event, what we could possibly do. And also I heard the support, wanting to support local business, local restaurants, uh, getting people to come. So an idea I had was the possibility of setting up a large tent and offering each day of the event a farm to table type elegant dinner. If we were able to find two to three restaurants that would be willing to do something like this, uh, you could sell the tickets at a high enough price where you had uh, proceeds coming that that you could direct to whichever uh, organization, whichever you'd want to go with that, back to the arts, back to the care center, to wherever. Uh, but I heard fundraising as being an option, and this would be an opportunity uh, not only to raise funds, but to create kind of an elegant, neat experience, unique and different uh, than you're going to find at most other uh, art type festivals. And also provide an opportunity where you can highlight your donors, your VIPs, and give them a little bit special treatment. It would give also an opportunity to highlight some recipients, awards, things like that, that you might want to highlight during the event. Um, it would be a matter of getting a tent set up, the right type of tent. I had sent some pictures over to Lynn, uh, the possibilities of this. These are things that have been done, and we've done a couple here. Uh, you can get creative. You can make them very, very elegant. Uh, and it could be kind of unique and different. Uh, as Lynn mentioned, I do hope that everyone can come over and kind of take a tour of the fairgrounds and take a look uh, so that we can design a flow once all these ideas come together and we select the ones we want to move forward with, of uh, where we would set up, how they would set up the flow of traffic of the people. That'll lend itself to where the vendors who are selling their artwork will be. Uh, one of the things we did talk about is the U-shaped buildings to have a stage and a tent in the center of that, which would draw people in and then have your larger vendors into that space. But there's an awful large footprint out there that we can fill up and kind of direct, depending upon where we put entertainment, where we put staging, where we put food, uh, so that you can really kind of draw people in and direct that traffic flow throughout the entire event so that nobody's disappointed and all your artists, all your vendors are getting recognition and getting an opportunity to uh, uh, interact with your, with your guests. So uh, those are some of the ideas, uh, things that we do already at the fair. We, you, know, you guys had talked about the possibility of getting high school students involved. We do have a student art scholarship program that we've done here. It's open to all the high schools. It's something that we've already started. We have a lot of paintings that are still here from some of those artists uh, that we could put on display, that we could possibly sell, that we could probably invite some more of those kids to come back. I know it'll be early back in school, but the word could get out now and kids, I think, would participate. Uh, we have a talent show that we always put on it. You guys had mentioned about having dancers and performers uh, from the high school level. And the talent show that we do actually runs from the younger kids all the way up to the high school. Uh, that is something else that we already do. Uh, we could possibly incorporate that into one of the days as a uh, entertainment on one of the stages. So things that we need to kind of come up with is the actual schedule, the, what stages, how many stages, uh, so that we know where we're going and, and what we want to get onto those stages. Uh, that's going to give you the flow of traffic and the, the direction that we need to kind of design where everything else will go. But those are things that we do at the fair. And uh, if those could be incorporated, I think they could possibly help us out a little bit and also help the event. Out. Wonderful. Jim, If um, I would like to just sort of make sure that I'm, you know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the way also that you explained it to me was initially uh, the fair was not going to happen this summer because of COVID. Then after we started planning this event, they actually did go ahead and say, you know what, we are going to hold the fair. It was going to be the weekend after the Fine Arts Festival. Sure. With these ideas that Jim has had, he says, 
we will not do, we're going to consolidate. So we just doubled our audience, cut down on competition because there's people who would say, I really want to go to the fine arts festival, but I'm going to wait instead, go to the, the fair or vice versa. I really want to go to the fair, but the fine arts festival happened first. So he wants to take all of the art aspects and I was unaware of how much the arts play a role in the county fair. So this was really educational and enlightening for me to hear from Jim. And he showed me some of the artwork and it's fantastic. And this is how the kids compete through the arts in the fair. So we're gonna take the aspects of the arts of the fair and pay homage to the history of the fairgrounds. That's what this is. And really elevate and bring both components together which we think is only going to make obviously each piece much, much stronger. So, and that also helps staff, that helps all the work, that helps everything because we're consolidating and being much more streamlined and efficient for this goal. Does that sum it up okay, Jim? Yes, it does. Okay, great. And then to your point about, you know, the dinners, so the, the farm to table, he, that's the piece that he's talking about, bringing that agriculture piece through, or as I call it, um, art's first muse, right? Nature, that's, that's, that's what the arts are inspired by. And this is a way that we can also, for his example that he gave of the butterfly garden, um, we have the chair of our environmental committee here who just was speaking about pollinators right now and the importance. So that's something where you can put the art, you have the butterfly garden, and then how about highlight the work that the environmental committee is doing to make sure and foster those types of initiatives locally. So that's a way to tie in some of all and highlight the work we're doing at the local level, at the county level. Um, I have reached out to, there's five or six sort of known restaurants in DuPage County that are known for being farm to table. So I've reached out to them and I'm in talks about um, <clears throat> who would be interested in putting that type of an event on. The pictures that Jim showed are sort of like what you've seen at an elegant wedding, that kind of a tent, right, with tablecloth, and it could really, um, as these are all Jim's ideas, wonderful source of fundraising, and a really unique experience for people to come out, have um, a very elegant dinner, and then listen and to concerts, go see the art, go watch something. So all of these ideas are really exciting, and I think keep raising the bar here. Um, we will work and we're going to talk tomorrow um, with Jim and I and senior staff about finalizing the intergovernmental agreement. So as soon as that's done, you're going to be hearing that and that comes next to this committee. So that's also, it's already done. The, it's, the IGE is already prepared. We're just going to go over it with a fine tooth comb tomorrow. So we've been working um, closely and very hard on this initiative. So Jim, thank you for those wonderful and creative ideas. I love them. And I just, I think it's fantastic. This vision of yours and the, this idea to, to join forces, I think is phenomenal. Um, so thank you for that. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask Jim before we move on to the next topic? I do have a comment. Uh -huh. sure. So, um, so we have a donor advisor that specifically has a grant program for art gal uh, gallery events, art ex exhibitions. And I think it would be very possible that the um, fair could apply for that. Oh. But the deadline is next week, June 30th. But it's a really simple application. Can you, can you forward that to me? I sure can. It's you, actually on our website also. Um, but I will send it to you. Barb, if you need Jim's address, feel free to forward it to me and I'll forward it to him too. If okay. You, that's easier. Um, and then the other, okay. That's great. Thank you. Go on. Go on. And then the other thing that came in mind, we had given a grant to Elmhurst Symphony in 2019 and fall of 2019 for an actual program called Pollinator, Pollinators in Action. Wow. And it actually is exactly what you're talking about. Huh. So I don't think that they have had the opportunity to do that yet, but they may be have already been working on that. It'll move. That's amazing. Uh, and it was exactly what you were saying, Jim. It was, you know, to really bring in the environmental piece and the music piece together. I, I have the goosebumps. That's yeah. awesome. I love this. Let's definitely look into that. I think that can be a perfect, perfect alignment. Mm -hmm. Great idea. 
Thanks. Will you will you send that information to me, Barb, and we can move forward on that? Okay, great. And I see, did someone raise their hand? Beth. Oh, Beth. Let's hear from Beth. Yes. Well, since Barb talked about grants, I thought this would be the perfect time. Um, thank you to those of you who came to the legislative day at Frida Kahlo yesterday. It was great to see so many of you. Um, I was with the director of the Illinois Office of Tourism, um, Carla Flannery. I hope you all got a chance to meet with her. She started right in the midst of COVID. So this was the only the second time I've got to be with her face to face. Um, she mentioned to me that Governor Pritzker is going to be putting out a grant that will help street festivals and events. Um, it is <laughs> it is not uh, public yet, um, but she gave me a sneak preview, and I think that's another avenue we could go after for this event. I love it. I love it, and I loved meeting Carla. And so that was I was there yesterday, as were some of my colleagues, and. Wow, I think it was the most perfect example for all of our legislators to see what arts in action looks like. It was a Monday morning and it was crowded. And the line in the gift shop snaked through the whole gift shop and people were spending, they were there, they were going out to lunch afterwards. That's all you could hear is where are we having lunch? And um, it was the most perfect example of everything we talked about on the board floor two weeks ago about how the arts can help recovery, drive economic development, and increase the quality of life in our community. It was the most wonderful crystallization of that. So thank you for letting us be a part of that. And thank you for that introduction to Carla. We exchanged information and she is extremely interested in this event and the work we're doing here. So I, I'm hoping we're gonna be working with her. So as, soon as, I, as soon as I see um, the announcement of the grant, I'll bring it to the committee. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Beth. Sure. Um, Sheila, did you have something? I did, yes. Okay. Um, well, thank you, first of all. Um, I don't, Vice Chair. don't know if we have titled this yet, but listening to your talk and hearing Jim and how they want to tie all this, you said Art's First Muse. Yep. Yep, yep. Nature, dot, dot, dot. Arts first yeah. news. I think that's our title, but I'm not the boss of things, we but <laughs> I love that idea. I do too. We've been kind of tossing this around. I've been thinking about it when I can't sleep. And I've been thinking, you know, from, from agriculture to art, there's so many things yeah. that we can tie in, but I'm with you. I think we need to bring in these pieces of nature and the, like I said, paying homage to our history here and how it all comes in. So I love that too. Yeah. Good. I love and, it. And I love I'm, it. I'm goosebumps, like you right. say, <laughs> the, the grants, the, you know, Jim's ideas with the fairground, it just, things are falling into place. They it are. Really a cool feeling. It is. It is. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So we're going to move on. Greg, are you ready? You're up to bat. I am, but can I ask a question? Of course. Slash comment first. Sure. So at what point will, or will there be, and I'm sure there will be, um, Will there be, as Jim pointed out, a layout that says this is going to be for musicians over here on this date from this time to this time, and this is going to be for other folks over here? And then whom is the, the, the point person for providing potential artists and potential restaurants and potential exhibitors and potential anything um, as we uncover those opportunities, when we go directly to you, because I mean, I have many, many um, artists yes. who have already expressed interest to me, but I don't know what to tell them in right. terms of well, you can have Friday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on this stage. Right. So that's what we are working on right at this moment. So I'll tell you how we're approaching that okay. and, and um, how this is going to sort of play out okay. in the short term and the long term. So in terms of music, that's me, Terry, Orb, and Orbert, and Mark. So we're working on that. Um, in terms of visual artists, that's Debbie with Arts DuPage, and she is putting out the call to artists, like we said, uh, tomorrow. We were just getting some more information on like intri intricacies. Um, and then also, but obviously Debbie has access as do you, to more than just visual artists, but all the artists who are registered with Arts Do Page. So once we have our headliners, that's sort of what we're starting with. So we're starting at the top 
like meeting what who is going to anchor which mm -hmm. apps are going to anchor each day so that's what we're working on right now well if it even if it is a music app it might be something else that anchors oh yeah it doesn't mean Art music painting exhibit you got it so whatever the the headliners are so mm -hmm. of each day so we're eight we're finding out our anchors okay. and then once we have the anchors plugged in then we're moving on and we're doing it from from there um and so we're going to have definitely a division of labor. Mm -hmm. So anything that's musical is going to go to our producer, Mark Ingram. Okay. Anything, and then we'll do, I'm, I'm just making this up. This is not official yet. Maybe if it's visual, it would go to Debbie. Maybe if it's um, theater, it would go to, I don't know. Okay. Let's, let's but just, there will be a jumping off point. 100%. Yes, absolutely. So we are, that's, the, that's how, we're um, approaching this. So right now we're in the headlining phase. Okay. And Terry, is there anything, not to put you on the spot, and we're not mentioning names until things are official, but would you like to speak or some of your, because some of your ideas have been so wonderful and exciting. Do you want to talk about any of your headlining and bigger ideas for the performances? You know, Lynn, I am just going to yield because I think that we really need to have a meeting with Orbert and Mark, and you and me, to put things together before because we've got probably enough acts in mind to go for a two-week festival, and um, so we, we have to now start start checking schedules and weeding it, weeding people down and and. Uh, making sure that we have the right flow. So I'm gonna just wait just a second before I start offering any ideas because um, they're overflowing. <laughs> they really are. And you know, I, um, and I, she is exactly right. We're not mentioning names until we get it. But one idea that this, just to give you an idea of how we're thinking, um, Terry had this beautiful idea of whatever our musical um, events are to set up like a mini, do you guys, did you ever see summer dance in the city where they would put the dance floors and all the different parks all around the city? So to make sure that there's a dance floor there and then you bring in a dance instructors to whatever uh, is whoever is performing. So if it's, uh, you know, there's the samba that you're going to learn. Here's some swing you're going to learn. Here's that kind of a thing. Um, house music. You know, some hip hop, that kind of thing. So, mosh pit, mosh pit that Greg is going to leave. He's going to yeah. teach that. <laughs> um, there's a visual. Waltzing, who knows? Waltzing with the orchestra, that sort of thing. So, we're, we're, we're thinking um, in three dimensions. Let's just put it that way. We're making sure things tie in. Um, and that's the, and, and she is, Terry is right. We do have about two weeks worth of artists. And you know what's phenomenal? I just hit it again at 3 a.m. I thought, oh, that could be for next year. Mm -hmm. And that made me feel everything like went, oh yeah, this is a one and done. We can get them next year. We'll take, take that angle, exactly. So, but that's where we are and we will have that for yeah. everyone, I promise. And yes. my next question is perhaps, yeah. just perhaps there should be some thought given, you mentioned there's a producer that's been signed up now to yes. kind of supervise all this. Perhaps there should be some thought given to some type of brand manager, or branding organization, or I love this idea of kind of the arts intermingling with um, agriculture. But I, to be blunt, I worry mm -hmm. that the message of what we're ultimately trying to accomplish may get a bit muddled if we don't kind of keep our eyes on the prize, right? And so we, to speak, and I, yeah. we, we think we do a really good job branding and marketing DuPage County. You're hired. <laughs> well, yeah. I, yeah, you're hired. So um, I would love that if we, if you want to be the one to say, because I thought your comments uh, that the last meeting were spot on, yeah. and and I think a hundred percent. If you know, you and I can hammer this out separately, but if I think that that is a fantastic idea. And also to make sure that in terms of mission, brand, right, right. Um, and vision, that whole thing. Um, I agree with you. And we did spend a lot of time, Jim and I, talking about that. And I asked really, I said, you can make fun of the questions I'm asking and I will not be offended. I, and I asked him very like, will there, you know, in terms of the aspects that we were bringing over. Because I was, we were very clear on that. Yeah, to be, so, yeah, the, not a judgment statement about exactly. any of the things that are being proposed. I just feel like if you don't have a clear message and you don't have a clear brand, yes. then you become 
um, kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. Well, and it. I'm worried that if we go too far afield, that we lose our focus. No pun intended. Exactly. Um, yeah, I am not concerned because I know that we are going to have the okay. right stakes, but I'm happy to have our but resources. I would like you to be sure. exactly. I think that's okay. wonderful, and um, you are hired. Right. So, right. would usual, you like to the usual bring... rate? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Joan. Don't <laughs> Hold on a second. Okay. So, the only thing I want to say is that the company that Choose DuPage works with, which did the excellent um, ad campaign we did last year, I'm going to do it for free. I'll I did not way. want to commit your resources without no. your knowledge we'll, and correct. budget. Um, <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Joan. So would you like to talk about how it went? Um, as yeah, so for, I, for, I, for everybody in the room kind of knows this, but for those on the call, um, the county board did approve today the uh, next round of the reinvest in page program, um, $15 million, uh, up to a $50,000 grant for businesses, corporations, independent contractors, and not-for-profits. And I know many of the arts organizations are considered not for profits. Our website already contains the link. So simply go to choosedupage.com to learn more about it. Uh, there will be a right. webinar. We'll be putting out a press release to that effect tomorrow because we didn't want to get ahead of your okay. As Joan points out, press release tomorrow and a webinar on Thursday um, with a Spanish translation to follow immediately afterwards. As of two hours ago, we had over 100 businesses. And I'm assuming there's some not for profits in there signed up for the webinar already. So we, as previously stated, we expect the program to be completely oversold in very short order. Thank you to Chair Chavez and the rest of the county board members for voting in favor of this and spearheading it. But I would encourage all of the, our arts partners on this to make your, your constituents and your partners aware of this. Because as I said, um, it is a first come, the software that we're using puts a date and a timestamp on every application and it will be first come first serve. So much like um, trying to get that A seat on a Southwest flight, make sure you're, you know, Monday morning, log in right away. Because the portal, the portal, if everything goes as planned, the portal for the actual applications themselves will open Monday, June 28th at 9 a.m. That portal will be on the Choose You Page website. So simply choosedupage.com. $20 million or less in annual revenue. So if you're Worthwhile not-for-profit organization has revenue in excess of $20 million, they will not qualify. Um, as Member LaPlante pointed out, we were, we were pleased and tickled to death and Member LaPlante knocked it out of the ballpark at our Choose Due Page board meeting last Wednesday. Uh, the business community represented by the Choose Due Page board is in full support. Many of my members approached Member LaPlante to see how they couldn't get involved and how they could help. We will send out a follow-up email to our Choose Due Page board members as things get kind of buttoned up a little mm -hmm. bit more in terms of sponsorship levels and the scheduling and what the, the event ultimately looks like. Um, but we will also market it far and wide to our non-board member constituents. Uh, but again, member of the plant just say, we saved the best for last. Aww, and she closed sure. our meeting with a, a very impassioned presentation on how we can help. Um, as Joan pointed out, we work with market. I am, you know, not a marketing expert. I know enough to be dangerous. We work with branding and marketing people who are experts in the field. And um, I'll reach out to them this afternoon, yeah. let them know what we're thinking about and make sure that we can come up with some good brands and some good marketing strategies on outreach. Wonderful. Thank you. That's perfect. Yeah. I also did off, um, put out there into the universe that Greg is going to be arriving via helicopter to the event. Right. So um, falling into the mosh pit there we out go. of the helicopter. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Catch me. <laughs> Not at all to have a nightmare. No, 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 no worry. It was just choose to <laughs> So thank you very much for that. So I think, you know, is this is so now everyone can see what we've been working on and working towards. Um, it gets narrower, narrower, and narrower every day, which is wonderful. Which is how it, that's the process. You start broad, and you narrow, and focus in. Um, are there any questions or other suggestions or discussions that anyone would like to have about this? 
Yes. Yes, I have a quick question. Sure. I just want a little clarification. You said that the 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 uh, fear and this is going to go in conjunction. Is that correct? I'm a little confused on how that's going to work. Sure, Jim. Would you like to explain that and answer Member Garcia's question? Yeah, it's not necessarily going in conjunction. Just taking some of the components uh, of the fair, the art portions that we have, oh, and possibly okay. including some of those into this program. Uh, but then just kind of focusing on some of the things that we have highlighted on the grounds uh, from an educational standpoint and an arts program, uh, the butterfly garden, the orchard, uh, there's a small vineyard back there, things like that, that that could become part of the messaging, uh, pollination, as was mentioned with the band. Uh, and there's a lot of artwork that, you know, historically is tied back to ag or to the land, American Gothic, probably one of the most iconic these are working in American history. Uh, definitely is tied back to agriculture. So somehow to kind of just blend it to make this festival stand out different than the others, and then including possibly, like I said, the talent show, student art contest, some of the competition, if you would like to invite others to participate, uh, or if it's just going to be a sale for artists, or you going to get other people actively uh, engaged possibly photography, amateur artists, people, you know, so there's something like that, similar to what we do at the fair through art, which okay. there's a lot of sharing your talents, challenging others to do better is kind of what a fair is about. And I think that's kind of the same as what, you know, art is about. So uh, I think there's a connection that could, that could work. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the clarification. I'm a little more on the page what's actually happening here. Thank you. Yes. I'm just, uh, thank you, Chairwoman. I, I'm just going to say, you know, at first I kind of was trying to wrap my head around that, but really what we're proposing to use for the, the stages and all the other activities, we got a whole lot more fairgrounds to use there too. So I, I'm, I'm love Jim's idea of how to tie that all together, especially because we can't do the county fair this year. And we get a little taste of agriculture and tie it into the arts. I think that's yeah, even absolutely. beyond this so year. We are going on also at the same no, time. No, 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 no. Uh, that's where I got to use the We're going to have a fair to blend in. Yes. Not even remote. Now, now I understand. I said only the arts component yeah. okay. of the fair. fair. Missed that yeah. old thing. <laughs> well, you could review the tape. Yeah, I, I believe you now. Yes, um, Beth. Um, I just want to have a very simple question. Um, it says in the minutes that the events are, um, the dates are the 24th and 25th, which is a Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. And so That's correct. it's not Saturday and Sunday. Well, so with Jim's idea of bringing in, you know, take canceling the fair and consolidating, he said, for sure, we're going to need those three days. So these are, we're, we booked the whole weekend. So we have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and we're looking into, and these are the things that we are shaping out. So we do ask for your patience while we shape out. It's Friday night, perhaps it's going to be a VIP donor night, a preview, that. or maybe we have enough, like, as we said, we have so many acts that maybe Thursday night, we hold a preview and a VIP donor event, but for sure for right now, we'll count it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, so that Sunday piece was missing. I just wanted to make sure. Correct, and that was added in for sure after we talked about the combining courses. Yes, thank you, Beth. Um, Greg, did you hear? I did. I okay. have, I, you may have already heard this. I have gotten a couple phone calls. I would assume elected officials may have as well. Fairs are starting up again over the summer. Mm -hmm. um, even though most of them are sponsored by local not-for-profits, it's still a very competitive environment. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that at some point we're going to reach out to the local communities or the folks who hold fairs in the various towns throughout DuPage to kind of send the message that this is not in competition with, that this is collaborative and we're not trying to, because I got two phone calls to do one saying, what are you doing? Why are you on this committee? We already have festivals. Interesting. Gonna, so, you know, obviously- Just make a little outreach with- Yes, I think that's a great idea. Um, of course, it's in not in competition, it's a collaboration and there's, there's enough of the pie to go around. I think I would turn for sure to Beth 
and the DCBB to help with that messaging, perhaps, you know, to get that point across? Does that sound like something that would be in your wheelhouse, Beth, with DCBB? Be more than happy to send some communication out to the mayors and managers and from the different communities. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, well, I just say most running. of those festivals are going to be July and August. I don't think there are really a lot of them that are going to lead into September. So, you know, we can kind of package this up as a wrapping up the summer, or I, I think they're being a little protective. Yeah, I think, but I do think some of them got. If they were normally June and July, I think they did get pushed to July, August, September. So I think you will see um, some more overlap than we think. Sure. Yeah. And that, there, that happens. That, that, that happens. Yes, Jim? There will be. Oops. We lost you, Jim. There, there will be many events coming up in September, October, because everything did get pushed back. Uh -huh. And folks last year canceled. This year, uh, instead, folks pushed it back, and they're going to still make it happen this year. So it's going to be stacked up pretty tight at that time frame, okay. which is why I kind of mentioned this up about tying something into the fairgrounds, making it unique, because there are actually some, when I looked at the calendar events, there's art festivals that are going to be happening in, throughout that time frame, too. Right, right. And then this way we can... Joining forces, I think, does really help us. So um, great. Well, we'll get on that sooner than later. Thank you for bringing that up, Greg. And thank you, Beth, for um, being able to message that. And we'll we'll work on that, definitely. Um, anyone else have any questions or comments or ideas? No? OK. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Just, yeah. So what was your answer to those two phone calls you got about? Call member of the plan. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> My answer was collaborative and cooperative. Yes. Good. We want to support. Because in case I get that question, I want yeah. to have a, an answer. I think that's a great answer to have, and it's the truth. And yeah. that's what we're doing. Yeah. But to that point, we may just want to have those on our radar. Sure. Make sure yeah. we're not overlapping headliners or something like that. Of so course. that the perception is correct. Right. So yeah. for sure, we'll definitely. And hopefully when we when we get all of that, we can we'll be keeping that in top of mind, yep. definitely. Um, okay, any other questions or comments or anything? No, okay. Well, um, our next meeting is going to be, uh, we're gonna let you know after our, we, Jim and I sit down with senior staff to go over the IGA, and then we're gonna come up with our next meeting time. Um, and we'll get back to you probably by, just like we did last time, by the end of this week. I'm going to guess it's going to be in two weeks again, but it will not be on that Tuesday because two weeks from today is July 6th. And um, we're going to push it a little bit back of the week because of the holiday. So um, that is my, I'm anticipating our next meeting is in two weeks towards the end of the week, maybe Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but we will let you know by the end of this week. And um, I thank you so much for everyone for coming and joining us via Zoom and in person for all your help and support. I'm just tickled beyond belief at how this is all coming together. And I'm thrilled. So thanks, everyone. And we will be in touch soon. You want to do old business? Oh, business let's do that. Yes, that. absolutely. Thank you. Right. This is why we need vice chairs. Um, I just get so excited by the, this all this stuff that I'm going to forget the little these old business. Anyone want to discuss old business? Anyone have anything? Seeing none, how about new business? Which is all we just discussed. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, then I adjourn this meeting. Can we take a roll call to close this meeting, please, Teresa? Second. And second. a second motion from Vice Chair. Yes, thank you. 245, right on time. Uh, Vice Chair Rutledge. Uh, I. Member Selman. Member Desart. I. Member Garcia. I. Member Hart. Uh, Chair Lopez. I. Okay, thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned, and we'll be in touch soon. Take care.